We've seen how animals can adapt and survive, even in the most extreme situations. But next up, we meet a man who has to cope with his own rather surreal senses. Englishman James Wanerton doesn't just see the world differently to most of us. He tastes it. What happens is uh, I get one of my senses stimulated, my hearing, and it, that immediately gets translated into a taste for me. It's a real mouthfeel as well. It's not, uh, not an association, it's actually a mouthfeel. It's as if I'm actually eating something. Yes, James can taste words. And what's more, he's had this peculiar ability since childhood. I used to go on the tube train with my, with my mum. And uh, I used to read off the names of the stations as we passed through. And each of these stations had a unique and distinct taste and texture. We used to travel a lot on the, on the central line, which was my tastiest line, and it was lovely. Not all these tastes are nice. There's a few stations that are pretty horrible. Bond Street's one. It's got the taste and texture of uh, something similar to the hairspray. Tangy. <laughs> That's horrible. Most people's senses work independently. So why is James' sense of taste triggered by the sound of a word? Could it be something to do with the one organ that has to interpret everything that we see, hear, taste, touch and smell? Imagine that this is my brain. It allows me to get around and make sense of the world. And each part of that brain is ascribed a specific task. And you need all of those parts for it to function properly. Let's imagine that the lemon is damaged in an accident, then I may not be able to recognize myself in a mirror. And if the apple becomes diseased, I then think that my left hand belongs to someone else. Now, these are not amusing anecdotes. These are neurological conditions that have been recorded by doctors. And what they tell us is that when the brain is damaged, things get taken away. But in James's case, it's not about being taken away. It's that he's got extra perceptions. So is it a case that James's brain effectively has more fruit, not less? To the best of our knowledge, there seem to be perhaps extra or strengthened connections between the area of his brain that processes words and the area that processes tastes. And there are neurons firing from the word portion of his brain to the taste portion of his brain um, that causes him to have this extra perception. So James's brain doesn't have extra food, just extra connections between the food. And this allows some of his senses to talk to each other. It's like an eyedropper of taste, you know, it uh, just drops. It just drip drops one, 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 one after the other for every single sound I hear. This fantastic neurological phenomenon is called synesthesia. The vast majority of, the, of these synesthetic tastes that I experience are from childhood. Um, a lot of them uh, are sweets, um, things like wine gums and um, things you can sweets you can't buy anymore. So does James's childhood offer a clue to where his curious condition came from? So the general idea um, is that perhaps synesthetes have some genetic difference that causes either extra connections or a lack of pruning of connections. So when we're born, we have lots of neural connections. Um, and throughout time, those neural connections get pruned down to the ones that are meaning meaningful for us. In every newborn baby's brain, represented by this bunch of bananas, the senses are better connected. But we don't need all of these connections to understand the world. So gradually, one by one, they are severed. The difference, however, with James's brain is that one of these connections remains intact. The one between the piece that processes words and the piece that processes taste. And that is mind-boggling. 
So what if some brilliant brain surgeon discovered a way of snipping James's extra neural connections now? Freeing him from these strange synesthetic sensations forever. Would he do it? I couldn't imagine life without it. And I think most synesthetes would say the same. Fantastic. And although this might read as faulty wiring, in my opinion, this is as close as a human can come to having a proper superpower. So I couldn't resist asking James what my name tasted like. Do you know what he said? Soggy crisps. Soggy crisps. So much for the superpower.